The Sea Shepherd Steve Irwin's an all vegan vessel, so I checked out their pantry. I've come up with a few little dishes that I'd like to cook if I was on a vegan voyage. I'm Simon Bryant, I'm a chef, and welcome to the Pirate's Galley on the Sea Shepherd Steve Irwin. So I'm back in the Pirate's Galley on the Steve Irwin. And just as a little recap, this little tiny galley here, or kitchen, has to serve around 40 or 50 people three times a day for up to a couple of months. So it's, it's a big task. I'm gonna cook something that's really getting into a real winter dish now. And I'm using wild rice, but I'm gonna mix it with one of my absolute favorite things. This is rain grown, biodynamic, Australian long grain basmati unhulled rice. That's a mouthful, but what it is, it's a long grain rice, but it's not irrigated. It's, it's grown out near Mount Ferry just with rainfall. Now the problem is they both have different cook times. So what you need to do is get the wild rice cranking first. So don't worry too much about water measurements, but start at about one to two would be a good sort of indicator or one to three if you're a scaredy cat and you think you're gonna catch it. So you need to get that on first, that's your first job. Wild rice is about 50 minutes to cook. So let's give it a 20 minute head start and then the basmati rice can catch up with it. So <clears throat> basmati, a nice way to cook basmati is to peel off it. And that's basically driving some sugars out of the onion um, to get a little bit of sweetness to counteract the earthiness and then to braise it. So you start off by sauteing a little bit of onion and garlic um, I'm going to put some saffron in because I just got a little bit excited because I got hold of some Australian saffron garlic. So give it a quick crush. And you don't have to get too fussy about this because it's going to be cooked to, to pieces. But I do like to crush it down just because I want to get it going really, really quickly and not faff around with the first bit in the pan. So I just put the garlic in with the onion. I've got the basmati, I've got everything ready to start the pilaf, which is, well, everything, onion and garlic. Pan's already on the heat, so I'm gonna pop a little bit of olive oil in first, and if I do it correctly, you know, the pan shouldn't smoke up, and all that means is getting the onion in quick. And it, it, is, a, it is a sort of, you go and buy this beautiful extra virgin olive oil, Australian oil, and then you just destroy it with heat. It's kind of, you know, pointless. So aim for sweating this garlic and onion down. Now I know the pan's safe, I'll, I'll put, pop a little more olive oil in. And the wild rice you can see here, it's happy, it's, it's bubbling away. So saute, saute, saute the onion. And then I pop a little bit of salt in for the simple reason that it helps to caramelize the onion quicker. Um, this is the, the Murray salt. The people just call it pink salt. Okay, the onion and garlic's almost going to that opaque stage. So you can pop the rice in now. And what you're aiming for is to glass the rice up. So the rice is brown and I'm looking for it to go a translucent hue. Okay, it's kind of where I want it to be. And the wild rice has had a little bit of a kickstart. And I've done a little bit of a cheat, guys. That's my wild rice taken to the stage where the grain is just coming through the husk. I don't know if you can see that, but it's, I'd say it's half cooked. It's not really nice to eat, but it's par cooked. So if you pretend that that's 10 minutes down the track, that's what it would look like. So what you need to do is combine the two and yeah, drain it off if you want, or just throw the whole thing in, because I'm gonna add water anyway. Give it a quick stir. Have some hot water on standby, because you wanna keep this thing going. If I pour a bucket of cold water in, I'm just gonna retard the cooking again, and it'll scream at me a little bit. No, it didn't, but if it does, it doesn't matter and then pop a little bit of saffron in. The amount of saffron you put in depends on how wealthy you're feeling rather than, <laughs> than how much you actually need. It's a little bit like truffle. I think gram for gram, it's one of the most expensive spices. Okay, and then I normally smack a lid on this and turn it down and don't disturb it. 
So while that's cooking, you can get on to the rest of it. And I, I kind of like gnarly, kind of ugly things. I like stinky old dogs. I like 90 year old guys smoking cigarettes in Greek fishing villages and all of that stuff. And that's why I kind of like pomegranates. They're kind of the most messed up looking thing. And they look, do look like they've lived a lifetime of, you know, getting gnarled and burnished on the outside. And then you bust them open and they're just this riot of like jewels. So get the little pearls out, the little crunchy pearls. And it is a bit of a tedious job. And quite often it's easier if you just cut them in quarters, you just get better access to all of the segments. Don't worry about a bit of pith, it's all good. All right, now if your pomegranates aren't producing that beautiful um, color and the, the tart, sweet, tannic liquid, you might, well, you probably haven't got a very good pomegranate, so you might want to get some pomegranate molasses and just add it in. Or you can rebalance it out with just a pinch of sugar and a little bit of red wine vinegar. But, you know, it's important that that flavor really has all of those balances in there for the dish because this dish really is pure simplicity and there's nowhere to hide with bad produce in it. There's nothing gonna ramp it up and push it into a good zone. Now, these are just beetroot tops. You could use shard, like ruby shard. You could use spinach, sorrel, but I like this because it enables me to wilt down the stems and then actually just throw the leaves in at the last minute and get two sort of textures. Whereas if you've got a little baby sorrel leaf, you're gonna miss out on, on that texture. Okay, so just roughly run a knife over the shard and cut the stems down to a more manageable sort of size for the pan. Right down the bottom, obviously, they're gonna to be tougher. So you might wanna line them all up and just lose the little bottom bits. Plus you got the dirty knife cut from the farmer. So that's the bit that won't taste great. So I'm gonna lose those very bottoms. They're a bit dry and woody. And then go over to the pan. I've already got a pan down on the stove. And we're just gonna saute it off. Chuck in a bit of verjuice. Um, verjuice isn't fancy. Verjuice is picking a grape very young and then going through the same process as white wine, but you haven't got the, the available sugars that are available in an older grape. So you, so you don't get the fermentation, it's that simple. Um, what it is, is a very soft, subtle acid. So it hasn't quite got the punch in the face acidity of, of a, a vinegar. And what that does for you is <clears throat> temper the whole dish down. So give them a quick wilt. Rice is nearly done, so the timing's pretty good. And then throw the leaves in. And do that with tongs. I just have no feeling left in my hands. When you smash the verjuice in, everything will wilt through and you'll be able to pull it off. So Nicola from Sea Shepherd's back, my Damn. professional vegan <laughs> taster. So give that a, a shot. I, I kind of call it a salad, but I don't know. It's so colourful. It is, isn't it? It's lovely. Oh, wow. And actually, I'm happy to mm. just eat a bowl of pomegranate, but that's probably a healthy thing to have the rice as well. Mm. It's, it's, it's beautiful. Oh, I'm glad you like it, because mm. it is actually one of my favourite really? like, little autumn numbers. It's lovely. So just a bit of a, a reminder, Nicola's um, looks after the donors for Sea Shepherd. Yes, I do. So how can you help? People can help by going onto our website. It's really easy, seashepherd.org.au. And it's easy, you can just join up to our direct action crew to donate monthly, um, and that's either by credit card or direct debit. And as Nicola said, this sort of stuff doesn't happen by magic. It happens and is driven by generosity of donors. So, you know, if you can help, um, the help would be very much oh, appreciated so by appreciated. you guys. Thank you. So we'll see you again next time for <laughs> Sartan Vegan.